Hey, TJ. Hey, what's going on? Not too much. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. So what did I do? I don't even remember. I went to work. <laughs> I exercised. I did get hit by a car. And I did see an accident on the way here. Oh. Yeah, someone was in the ditch. Uh, it was bad. It was bad. It was... I hope that people were fine. Um, but the, the two cars that were mangled pretty bad. I don't think it was to the extent where anybody got like killed or anything. But, you know... That's always never a good thing. Right, but, yeah. Uh, no. Yeah, yeah. It's just... But other than that, I'm doing good. Hopefully those people are okay. Um, but Yeah, uh, hopefully. Yeah. So how are you doing this week? Um, I'm I'm having a pretty good week. Um, but like right now, my anxiety is really high because I know that our listeners can't hear it. But my dog, my puppy, is crying downstairs because she hasn't been out enough today. And my husband decided that he was gonna he needed to work or do something a little bit late tonight which almost never happens of course happens on the same night when you are you and i are going to record the podcast so anyway my poor puppy is in her kennel downstairs and she is just crying and it's like having a baby if they cry you just want to go to them and be like please stop crying but anyway we're gonna we're gonna do this podcast um and and it's going to be great. All right. <laughs> so, what are we right. talking about this week? We are going to talk about eggs today. And awesome. so I know that this is like, it's, eggs is like a real, like, where does this come from? You know, I mean, off of a mostly motivational fitness related podcast. Sure, yeah. But, you know, um, we are going to talk a lot about motivation and overall fitness and health during this podcast. But I think sometimes it it is going to be helpful to talk about some very specific topics because it's helpful to give our listeners the full story on things and also because it can help us make a broader point. But so first, um, did you hear about this, this most recent study that came out about eggs? Um, I don't think I saw the study particularly about eggs, but I do know there's always something going on, and then they'll be like, hey, broccoli is the new meat. Right, yeah. right. Or, you know, coffee. This week, coffee is bad, and next week, it's, you know, the cure-all, yeah. you know? And so, eggs have, like, they've been drugged through the mud several times, I mean, over the years. Um, for a while, they were the devil. Um, when is we it all because thought, of the cholesterol levels yes, and stuff? Yes, yes. So, basically, um, this study, which um, the study is, is titled The Associations of Dietary Cholesterol um, or Egg Consumption with Incident Cardiovascular Disease and Mortality. So, okay. basically, they were studying whether dietary cholesterol and eggs caused cardiovascular disease and death. So, what is cardiovascular disease? Cardiovascular disease, well... Heart attacks. Yes, basically. Plaque in your yes. arteries, basically. Exactly. Strokes, stuff yes. Like that. I mean, like you know, I don't, I don't know if I can like come up with the exact medical definition of CVD right now, but yes, basically, it's, it's heart crap, attack. crap in your veins. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, um, this study was published in March in the Journal of the American Medical Association. And so the researchers were seeking a link between dietary cholesterol and egg consumption consumption and risk for heart disease and death. All right. They combined six different studies um, with a, a total of 30,000 participants over 17 years. Um, and their conclusion was that each additional 300 milligram cholesterol uh, 300 milligrams of cholesterol consumed led to a significant increase in cardiovascular disease and incident death. From so, how, so how much again? Each additional 300 milligrams of cholesterol consumed led to a significant increase in cardiovascular so disease. So how much is 300 milligrams if you were to put it in a cup or something relatable? I think, well, I, I'm not sure about that, but I think two eggs would be roughly 300 milligrams. Okay. Um, right. Because I think one egg is like somewhere around 130 milligrams or something. So give like or take, that. give yes. or take two eggs. Give or eggs. take two eggs. All right. Um, so I think the study said that, you know, somewhere between three, if you, if you ate more than three eggs a week, it was going to increase your risk of cardiovascular disease and, okay. and death. So, but before I go there, before before I sort of like get three into eggs a like, week, yeah, per week, yes, oh, not per shit. day, per I'm, week. I'm dead. So I know, right? We're all we should be dead. We should be dead. <laughs> so before I get into the problems with this study, um, I wanted to ask you: Do you do you eat eggs? 
Ah, uh, yeah, actually, two eggs every morning. Do you? Yep, yeah. Except for one day. So I, let's see, I go through ten eggs a week. Oh no, wait, twelve. Yeah, twelve yeah. eggs a week. You should, you should be dead. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So you're they're wrong. wrong. Okay, so I eat eggs too. I love eggs. I probably eat at least two a day. Well, don't you? Yeah, well, you have chickens and stuff. So. Yeah, I have I, I have 12 chickens. Well, so. you're not going to egg houses, so you might as well eat them. Eggs, exactly. <laughs> so, um, so no, I, I love eggs. I love them pretty much any way that you can make them. So I think that eggs, and again, this is just my personal opinion, but I think eggs are one of nature's perfect foods. You know, a lady from my work calls it pre-meat. What? pre pre meat she's a vegetarian <laughs> so she's like i can't eat all these other things but i can eat eggs because they're pre meat <laughs> i'm calling you out that's ashley that's awesome we yeah. need to, i mean can we put that we need to put that on a t-shirt like with an egg and say pre meat hashtag awesome. instagram hashtag pre meat you just have eggs <laughs> that's awesome all right so the really with this the broader points that I think that I that I wanted to make in talking about this study, and like I said, I'm going to go through some of the problems with this study and why it's probably okay to eat eggs, and we're going to talk about the health benefits of eating eggs and the health benefits of eating cholesterol. And yeah, we're definitely not scientists, so we could be wrong. Right. 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 We so could don't, be wrong. Don't take our word for granted, but but I know. think sometimes people take scientists people that are doing these studies they take their word as gospel right because they have the md or the you know the d the doctor behind their name and some of the science is old i mean years ago they thought sugar was good and now it's terrible for you well right Stuff and like and, that, and yeah. that like i think sometimes that has more to do with funding like where did the money come from for right. those studies coca-cola, coca-cola so, right yeah. when coca-cola funds the sugar study they're probably going to find that sugar's just fine for you <laughs> right so no but um i think it's really important like i'm going to make some pretty good points as far as the problems with this study and again yeah we're not scientists and we're not doctors but i think it's important for the public to know this because this study was splashed across the news and all of a sudden everybody's like, oh my God. It was just you know? this month, right? Yeah, yeah, it was last week. Okay. Um, and people are like, oh my gosh, are eggs good? Are they bad? There's all this confusion. So humans, we love a scapegoat. We love to focus on some single, tiny, insignificant thing and make that one thing the problem or the solution. And we see this all the time. So like if a study comes out and says that kale eaters weigh 20 pounds less on average, everyone starts eating kale because it had to have been the kale, right? Oh, exactly. Yeah. What the study didn't tell you was that on average, people who consume kale also tend to have a fairly healthy diet overall mm. and they exercise. So was it the kale or was it the combination of healthy factors that kale eaters tend to exhibit? It was the regularity. Right, right. It was their regularity. So like, again, we love to, we love to have a singular focus. Like there's a silver bullet or something like that, but there's almost never a singular reason for a health outcome. And And I like to make the broad point here that this is the reason that people get so confused about what to do. How should I exercise? What's the best time of day? What should I be eating? Is kale okay? Are eggs are eggs okay? Is you know fat are fatty cuts of meat are those okay? Um, Eating for health is actually pretty simple. Um, and I actually think we need to probably do a future show on the simplicity of a healthy human diet. Yeah. Cause it's like, I mean, to you, what would you say is like healthy human diet? Balanced. Basically that's going to be the easiest thing. And it's going to vary depending on what your goals are and stuff. Right. But Absolutely. balanced overall is going to be the best way. Cause if you go one extreme or the other, you're going to go crazy. Well, right. But I always tell people, I'm like, try and eat more vegetables and fruits so stuff that comes directly from nature, try and eat, you know, protein with every, a little bit of protein with every meal. Um, you know and I mean? Try not to eat too much processed crap. Yeah. I think the processed thing is right. the biggest thing. And yeah. in general, you're going to be fairly healthy without necessarily villainizing any specific thing. So information overload though, and like these studies that pick out very specific things, I think has made it more difficult than it needs to be. And studies like this and the way that the media portrays the information 
really causes people to second guess and then like they throw up their hands in frustration and then they keep eating Fruit Loops. Yeah. <laughs> so, they are good. So like I like to what happens if you drink too much water? Um I don't know. You tell me cuz I can't remember. Well like you die. Oh yeah. So uh, have That's you bad. seen these water challenges? Oh yeah, yeah. Well they they the radio station will do it like drink 5 gallons of water yes. and like an hour, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So we all I've know that, that hydration is like super important. It, when you talk to fitness people or when you talk to nutritionists, the first thing they'll say is, well, are you drinking enough water every day? Right. So hydration is like huge. But there's, you know, it goes both ways. You can drink too much water and it can kill you almost instantly. What is that called? Do you remember? Hyper... Hyperhydrosis? Hyper... I don't know. That sounds know. right. It's hyper something. I can't remember exactly right. what it is. Right, right. Yeah. So basically the sodium level in your blood gets thrown off yep. and which is deadly yep. um, and almost immediately deadly. And sodium is good for you. It's not necessarily bad. Right. That's just, another one. That's yeah. another one that, you know, they come out. It's like every week it's different. You know, salt is bad. Salt is good. <laughs> it's like nobody knows what to think. Who's lying? Who's not lying? Right. Yeah. Right. So, you know, perspective is important, but... I wanted to, before we get into like the benefits of eating eggs and cholesterol, I did want to talk about the problems with this study so that people can get a little bit of a better understanding of, of why you really need to take these studies with a grain of salt. As we both said, we're not scientists, but you still need to look at these studies and say, you know, is what they're is what they're telling me really the entire picture? Am I getting the entire picture? So, a couple of the problems here. So, the information um, from each of the six studies was collected differently, and these studies that's a red flag right there. Right. Yeah. Right. So when you combine six studies, I think they call it like a, a meta analysis or something. Okay. Um, when they combine all of these different studies, it's not like the researchers that are combining the studies did all of those different studies. So all of those six different studies were done with different methodologies. And this study in particular and studies that do these meta analyses they often minimize the fact that this data might not necessarily be comparable. Okay. So you, but you don't hear about that part of it. So the next thing, this study was based on an individual's ability to recall what he ate. And I think all of the participants, were, <laughs> I think all of the participants were male, but they, they had to recall what they ate over a period of weeks or months. So, like, I can hardly remember what I so, ate for breakfast. So they have to recall. So, But I know okay. I probably ate eggs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, they, so they'd ask them on basically Sunday, what did you eat for the entire week and lay yep. it out for us? Yep. Yeah, that's real accurate. Yeah, yep. Makes sense. So, and I mean, hey, maybe some people eat the same thing every morning, you know, but still, people are notoriously bad at remembering what they've eaten in the past. You know, it, like I said, even yesterday, most people don't remember what they ate. Unless you eat the same thing every day. Right, right. The other, another point um, is that eggs are not the only source of cholesterol in a person's diet. So again, this study specifically mentions cholesterol, dietary cholesterol, and eggs in the title. But again, eggs are not the only source of cholesterol in the diet. So what if the participants in this study also happen to eat a lot of bacon or butter yeah. or shrimp or fatty cuts of meat? Yeah, we it wasn't don't know, very... Right. We don't know any of that information. Yeah, it wasn't very focused then. So yeah. finally, this is an epidemiology study, and it basically shows... Epidemiology studies show associations, but not necessarily causation. So um, in epidemiology studies, a hazard ratio of less than double is likely to be meaningless um, because it's confounded by other factors. And I'm going to talk about that in a second. This study's hazard ratio was 1.03. And when the figures were adjusted for total dietary cholesterol, so that would be cholesterol from all sources in the diet, cardiovascular disease risk was 0.99, meaning that CVD, so cardiovascular disease risk, was lower among egg eaters. Really? Yes, when it was adjusted. So 
The study did not um, adequately factor in other variables that affect cardiovascular disease risk. So those would be things like smoking. So think about what things affect your, you know, your risk for heart disease. Yeah, a lot of things. You know, smoking. Are they all exercising? Exercise. Are they smoking? You know, yep. Are they 40 pounds overweight? Yep, weight. There's, there's a lot of things, yeah. BMI. A, yeah, even, even age. Yes. Age, age. yeah. Um, overall diet, your sleep patterns, your stress levels, your work environment, even your socioeconomic status. Really? Wow. Can affect. Well, because when you think about it, and I made this point in a blog post that I wrote about this. Like if the people in this study came from lower, um, lower economic means, so they, they made less money, maybe they live in poorer neighborhoods where they don't have access to healthy foods, they're probably eating like Cheetos and, and they're eating, you know, junk food. So maybe they're eating eggs. Yeah. Basically you can only get what you can get. And eggs are cheap, right? So they might be eating eggs as probably the healthiest source of protein and fat that they could get. But then they're eating all this other junk food. Mm. So again, and that's not their fault. It's, you know, they're living in a food desert. So, but this type of study doesn't bring that into account. So how can we attribute increased risk of cardiovascular disease to a singular thing like eggs when none of these other factors um, was really reasonably accounted for? Right. And you know, it doesn't sound like a very reliable study because I know... You know, most studies you have to be very controlled. It has to be very right. measured. You know, that's why they do most studies in rats and stuff because that can be very controlled. It's not, you know, one rat's a fat rat, right. one rat's this rat, and even even ethnic background, I would assume, would go into that study. Yes, as well. exactly, exactly. That would be another confounding variable. Um, and so, and I think it's really important to note that any study done on um, food or nutrition. These are notoriously difficult studies because most people, you can't put people in a lab for months or years. You know, nobody's going to sign up for that where they control your entire diet. So, and like you said, so most of the, most of the, the real research or the real good research comes out of mice and rats, which isn't always... You can't always relate that to people. Right. So it's notoriously difficult to uh, to do studies about nutrition and especially to just pick a single thing like eggs. And Well, even in the title, it's cholesterol and eggs. Right, yeah. right. But, you know, then you take that and, and you almost wonder if they're trying to make it so that the media will pick up the story. Fake news. <laughs> But you almost wonder because it's like if if you're studying dietary cholesterol, I mean, why would you even throw like eggs in the title? I just there's a lot of other things that are exactly. Bad, but I think eggs is the most common that people could grasp. grasp Maybe I, yeah. I mean, you're probably right on that. I just... because I mean, if you say goat cheese, like <laughs> who, who does? Right. Not many people know what goat cheese is. Or I eat they, a lot of goat. Well, cheese. Well, I'm not gonna go eat cheese. it. <laughs> I probably ate it one time, but I mean, eggs is probably the common denominator. I guess. Just yes. like if they did a study on milk, most people know what that is. Right, right. It's the common de- denominator and eggs. You know, eggs do have, a, you know, a higher level of cholesterol within them than, you know, than other uh, foods that people would eat normally. So anyway, um, why don't we go through the reasons that you might want to consider continuing to eat eggs like what are the health benefits of eating eggs why are they good okay so let's talk about just like the nutrition aspect so one egg is about 70 calories you know six grams of protein five grams of healthy fat and no carbs so if you're doing a ketogenic style diet or low carb diet that's going to be one of the things you go to a lot of times i mean i don't necessarily want to eat steak in the morning for breakfast, I mean that'd be great if I could afford it. But I mean, <laughs> I was gonna say I love steak and eggs. <laughs> but I mean, most people can't afford to eat steak and eggs and all this expensive stuff. So they're gonna go to the eggs because it's what it's like. How much is it at the store? Eighty cents a 
carton. Um, yeah, and and I buy the I actually buy the expensive. Well, I don't I don't have to buy you them don't because have I to. have chickens. Yeah, I right have chickens, the window, but yeah. when I have had to buy eggs in the past, I buy the more expensive ones because I like to know that the chickens are probably get outside and they're cared for better. But also, the eggs tend to be healthier from grass fed hens. Sure, yeah, that makes they sense. They have more omega fats and stuff. Um, but even then, if you compare the cost, if you eat two eggs a day to stopping at McDonald's every morning, it's still cheaper, even if you buy the expensive eggs. Well, I'm not going to buy expensive eggs because I don't <laughs> want to spend $5 a week on eggs. <laughs> Maybe, that's just me. You know what? Our, our hens are producing like crazy right now. So if you remind me when we're done, I'll send you home with a dozen. Nice. <laughs> All right. Free. Yeah, free. Free is always good. So eggs are also an uh, excellent source of vitamin D. B2, 6, 12, vitamin A, selenium, vitamin D, zinc, iron, and copper. So that's a bunch of stuff. Usually uh, B vitamins are what usually, um, that's in energy drinks, yeah. Vitamin yes. B12. So you get a lot of energy from the B12 vitamins. Um, uh, and I know that I think B12 is only in majority in meat protein, right? Yeah. 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 So, I mean, like vegans obviously are not going to... Um, not going to eat eggs, but some vegetarians who are okay with eating eggs, I mean, you know, it's going to be a great source of the B vitamins for them. Yeah, it's pre-meat. Right, it's pre-meat. Yeah, it's pre-meat. <laughs> so it also contains lutein, if I get this correctly. Yep. Um, that, you know, keeps your skin and eyes healthy, obviously. You know, women, men, whomever want to keep their skin glowing and healthy and great looking. And, you My know, 70 year old skin. Yeah, your 70 year old. really great. <laughs> it's from all the eggs. It's all the eggs. She just pours it in a bathtub and <laughs> bathes in it. That's how good it is. Um, and then your eyes, obviously, you know, you know, there's with the cataracts and all that stuff. I'm not, I'm not going to say that eggs prevent that, but obviously there's a bunch of things that, you know, keeping your eyes healthy is just going to be one of those things. Um, also, contains choline right yep so that's a group with the b vitamins and that most people don't get enough of as it is right um and you know i think b vitamins is one of those micro or no macro no, no mi- they're micro micronutrients yep. yeah that most people don't get enough of unless you're you know supplementing some way um and then we obviously we both know that it has you know the omega-3 fatty acids if um, you buy the eggs from the pastured chickens, they have more. Okay. <laughs> well, good thing I have fish oils in the morning <laughs> so I can save my dollar fifty. And then, the, you know, protein, you know, everybody's talking about, you know, uh, my wife always complains about this. Um, she's like, I'm always hungry. And it's like 10 o'clock. She ate at like 9. Um Right. And I'm like, well, yeah, because you ate cereal. Exactly. Oh, my gosh. I'm like, eat protein. I mean, we have plenty of stuff in the fridge, (laughs) you know, but that obviously protein, kind of going back on topic here, slow burning means you'll feel fuller longer, okay? Usually when you go on any diet program, they say up your protein, up your fiber, and that's the two big things that's going to sustain you. Even if you, you know, you eat at 5.30 in the morning like I do, and my next meal is not till 10. I'm usually not hungry till maybe 9.30, if that. Um, So people who eat eggs tend to weigh less. Is that true? Yes, actually. Again, this this is another study. Ah. So you have to take that with a grain of salt because it's another epidemiological study. So that, and again, they're attributing weight loss or people weighing less to a singular thing so it it may or may not have been the eggs in that that case but you know again it showed an association with people who eat eggs tending to weigh less but again i think that probably has to be taken into context with the with the person's entire diet so and their exercise patterns but Eggs, because they're a slow burning protein, they're going to keep you full for longer. I have definitely noticed when I eat eggs versus like oatmeal, and oatmeal is typically considered something that's healthy, yeah. quote unquote healthy. Mm-hmm. When I eat oatmeal in the morning, I am hungry literally an hour later. Even if I mix some peanut butter into it, I'm yeah. hungry in an hour. Now, when I eat eggs, I can go till noon or one o'clock and I'm good. Yeah, I just, I'm not. I tried it oatmeal for a while and just, you get bored of it. 
Yeah, I like oatmeal, but like I said, I don't like to be hungry an hour later. Yeah, well, so. only oatmeal is only good with brown sugar. Well, <laughs> right. So double, I'll be hungry in a half hour because <laughs> of the blood sugar spike. Yeah, <laughs> unless you put blueberries or something. Oh, sure, right. And then obviously the biggest thing to keep eating eggs, eggs are inexpensive. If, unless you get the $10 eggs that Kelly but gets. But hey, remember... Even just even the organic egg, the, the organic pasture raised variety is going to be less expensive than hitting the drive through every morning at McDonald's. Oh, so, yeah. Yeah. I mean, when my husband was going to McDonald's almost every day on his way to work a few a couple of years back and he was spending over five dollars a day. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's yeah, that's quite a bit. So, yeah. I mean, you know, when you when you actually do the math and I didn't do the math for the podcast, so I probably should have. But <laughs> when you do the math, it winds up being like if you have a couple of eggs and maybe a bowl of oatmeal, it's like a dollar less than two dollars for a breakfast. That's pretty cheap. Yeah. And now, versus, now, you know, going somewhere. Yeah. I think McDonald's, I think you can't leave there at, unless you get like coffee. Right, say, unless you're it's only like five bucks black coffee. Least, right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to go through a few facts about cholesterol because a lot of people are also confused about cholesterol. And, you know, we're worried about does cholesterol cause cardiovascular disease? And and I'm going to get in at the end, I'm going to talk a little bit about there are specific people or populations that do have to be a little bit careful. But for the majority of people, dietary cholesterol does not affect serum cholesterol. That's why the Scientific Advisory Panel for American Dietary Guidelines quietly changed their cholesterol recommendations several years back to no longer a nutrient of concern. So what is serum cholesterol? That would be your blood level of cholesterol. So when they take your blood. Ashley, I'm right. <laughs> we argued about this at what it, Why? What did she say it was? Well, she was saying cholesterol is bad for you and all this other stuff. I'm like, no, that's not... That's, yeah, right. That's false. That's been false for years. It has. Yes. So they they took into account the latest research and they found that uh, cholesterol intake was not, they could not find an association between intake of the, the cholesterol you eat from your diet and increased serum cholesterol and they couldn't link it to cardiovascular disease, which for years cholesterol was the bad guy it was the demon it was what was causing heart attacks oh yeah even in even when we went to personal training what three four right? years ago they said you know it needs to be under what 200 i think it yeah. was yeah. they they hadn't changed the books at that i still think that in a lot of cases they haven't changed the recommendations in the books oh you yeah know, it takes years oh, for yeah. that stuff to yeah. come out so again people are still really confused about cholesterol so what does actually seem to be linked to higher cholesterol and heart disease? Eating lots of sugar, lots of processed foods, and lots of starchy carbohydrates. So if I were most people, uh, I, I plan to keep eating eggs for breakfast and stay away from things like bagels and muffins and cereal and waffles, which are the typical American breakfast foods. And the reason <laughs> and the reason people go to it because they're easy and cheap. Right. I mean, you can buy a box of Pop Tarts for like two dollars. I know. That's like I know. six days. Yeah. But again, you get it, it. It's it's so frustrating because you get a study like this that comes out and says, "Oh, eggs are going to cause you to keel over and die of a heart attack." And so people are like, "Well, I guess I'm going to go and eat, you know, my cocoa puffs or you yeah. know, the waffles." <laughs> and it's like, okay, you know, that that's really not hopefully what they what they meant for you to do or what they you know the the people that did the study, but geez. Um, all right. Next thing is your body actually needs cholesterol. It is a vital building block of cell walls and a critical component of hormone production. Um, in fact, cholesterol is so vital for your cellular processes that, that your body actually manufactures cholesterol without dietary intake. Um, and I think, you know, I didn't really look this up, but, um, I have heard before that if you try and go on a zero cholesterol diet, that your cholesterol can actually become higher and especially is it be, is it because you're not getting any right yes and i think that is especially true if you're you go on a no uh, no cholesterol diet and then you start eating foods with cholesterol your body will like hyper respond and your cholesterol will be really jacked up um, but again your body needs cholesterol 
um, for normal function. Um, interesting also to note that half of all people who have heart disease have normal cholesterol levels and most heart attack victims have cholesterol within the normal range. Um, usually isn't that genetic? A lot of it. Yes. Is, yeah. is genetic. Yes. So there's definitely a genetic component. Um, Low cholesterol is not healthy. Low cholesterol is correlated with memory function, uh, with poor memory function, aggression, suicidal thoughts, and depression, and also um, Alzheimer's disease. Really? Yes. Wow. Yes. Hmm. Um, That's interesting. Yeah, because my grandma was just diagnosed with really? Alzheimer's. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Is she? Does she like? Is she afraid of eating eggs? I don't know. You know what? That we're talking about this. Like, grandma, you need to eat a dozen eggs. <laughs> I just noticed like my mom and dad and my husband's mom and dad, they are still, you know, for, they were the ones who went through the years and years of the government telling us how bad eggs are for you and how you shouldn't be eating any cholesterol at all because you were going to die. Um, and so my parents and his parents were part of that generation where they like, they're on the not total non-fat you know no fat in the diet oh yeah because they thought high fat was bad yeah yeah Yeah. so my mom's over there munching on like all of her fat-free cookies and chips and stuff they taste like garbage (laughs) right and they're like the worst things that you can possibly put in your because there's so much extra crap in there oh my gosh oh yeah and you know it's just like straight sugar so i mean it just jacks your blood sugar through the roof Hmm. so also when uh Total cholesterol is a poor indicator of heart disease. What actually matters is your LDL particle size. So when you go to get your cholesterol pulled, so which is a blood test, they're going to come back with several numbers. You're going to see total cholesterol. You're going to see HDL, which is the good cholesterol, and you're going to see LDL. So HDL, ideally, I think needs to be at about 60 or above. So that's your good cholesterol. LDL now they're doing a breakdown between LDL particles. So there's type A, which are what are called the light and fluffy LDL particles. Those are the ones you don't need to worry very much about because they don't stick to artery walls. And then there's the type B LDL particles, which are the real problem. They're the dense, hard particles that tend to form plaques. So the next time you have your blood drawn for cholesterol, make sure you're asking them to do the full breakdown so that you know like your your HDL and the difference in your LDL particles because total cholesterol is not necessarily t- giving you the whole picture of whether or not you have healthy cholesterol levels. And do you know the difference or not the difference between um, you know A and B at the LDLs? What causes those two? So definitely diet. Um, there, there is some, um, with most things, health, you know, there's a genetic component. Okay. However, diet plays an enormous role in, um, in triglycerides and also in these, um, in the balance between your LDL particles and your HDL. So, um, eggs, I think tend to be associated with higher HDL, which is the good cholesterol. Um, but again, if it, the, the things that are most associated with poor, uh, cholesterol, so, or, um, I guess higher type B LDL particles would be highly processed foods and high sugar. So okay. if you eat a lot of sugar and a lot of processed foods, you're probably going to have a higher, um, type B LDL particle count. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Um, And then lastly here, a low fat diet, which by default is low cholesterol, is shown to be worse for human health in almost every way. So I think just sort of like to close it off here, who should eat fewer eggs and be more careful with total dietary cholesterol and saturated fat? So there's, um, there's a group of people that they term hyper responders. And these are basically people who have a genetic tendency to overproduce cholesterol in response to diet, to c- consumed cholesterol. So diet, uh, cholesterol they eat in their diet. Okay. So that's a genetic tendency. Um, I don't know whether or not people with that genetic tendency would know that. And I wonder if, um, that, you know, that 21 and me or something like that, those right. genetic testings, I wonder if that they would tell you. 
You know, I'm not sure. I know that those um, those genetic tests are becoming more and more... Um, mainstream. Yes, mainstream. And they're getting more into like the health stuff mm-hmm. and helping people discover like, you know, where they might have some health risks and stuff. So I think it's definitely headed that direction. I think like if you know your family history of, of cholesterol and also... Um, uh, heart disease, you probably have a better idea of maybe whether you're a hyper responder. Sure. Um, but it's it's a it's not a large percentage of people that are hyper responders. Like I said, the they changed the the dietary recommendations because they couldn't really find a link between um, saturated fat and cholesterol and heart disease for most people. Hmm. Um, people who are allergic to eggs should probably avoid eggs. Yeah, that would probably be a good rule of thumb, I would say. <laughs> and that would not be necessarily all cholesterol or saturated fat. But again, you know, like since we're targeting eggs, if you should probably eat fewer eggs if you're allergic. Um, also, people who hate eggs probably shouldn't eat eggs. Yeah, sometimes they're slimy, so I can understand that. Right, yeah. right. So... I like, you know, I guess that's sort of like all I had on this topic. But again, just to bring it back to the main point, try not to let all of this information really cloud your judgment. If you like eggs, eggs are eggs are a food that comes directly from nature. Um, Eggs are not processed in any way, unless, of course, you buy the ones maybe in the carton or, you know, whatever. The ones I buy, yeah. (laughs) Right, the egg whites. (laughs) Oh, I don't buy those anymore. Uh, (laughs) But they come directly from nature. They're not processed in any way. In my opinion, eggs are going to be a healthier choice than the standard American breakfast of, you know, like I said, Fruit Loops or bagels or... McDonald's. Right, McDonald's. So... You need to take, perspective is really important. Eggs are healthy, broccoli is healthy, apples are healthy, but if you eat eight eggs a day, it could be unhealthy. Just like if you eat five pounds of broccoli or 20 apples in a day, it could be unhealthy. So the point is, it wasn't the eggs, the broccoli, the apples that caused your health woes. It's it's you need to take everything in the context of your entire, you know, what you're what you're doing in your life, your exercise, your eating. So that's sort of my take on it. I don't know if you have anything to add to this. No, I think that was great. I mean, I learned a lot of information. I know uh, some people that um, didn't necessarily know that the study is piece together and right. they just jump to a conclusion. Um, well, so I, they didn't jump to a conclusion. The news, again, you know, the new, fake news, fake no, news the yeah. news media jumps to the, you know, to a conclusion. And then again, it, people just tend to take it as gospel because it's a, you know, a doctor who put out this information. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's definitely a lot of information. I know, um, people at work and stuff are definitely going to hopefully listen to this and maybe take inventory on what they're eating. <laughs> Um, you know, and then eat the eggs, not the fruit loops, people. Yeah. And I'll it's be really actu- that simple. Yeah. And I'll be actually, I'm curious to see what my numbers are considering I eat eggs all the time. Yeah, definitely. And, yeah. and like I said, get the, get the correct breakdown in your cholesterol and, um, I'm due to go get mine pulled too. And so I'm really interested, you know, I eat lots of healthy fats, healthy, saturated fat eggs. And so it'll be interesting to see what mine is too. This is the initiative project podcast. And we will see you next time. If you like what you hear, please comment, subscribe, push that like and notification button on YouTube. That would be great. See you next time, guys.